Hello again. So video number three, um, as you know, I am new to the video world. So um, yesterday I posted a video which is very much on my heart, but it ended up being 28 minutes. And so I believe um, that the message I shared is so important that I'm actually going to share it or read it again. And I'm going to try to make this video shorter so that more people out there would be willing to listen, I understand the world out there and our time is limited and sometimes you can be intimidated by such a long video. So I'm gonna try to condense it today. So here we go. In um, December of 2007, I ended up watching the movie, the Disney movie Enchanted and something really stuck out to me. After the prince saves the maiden, um, of course he wants to marry her and she ends up the next scene you see after he saves her is her coming out of a carriage, still dressing herself in her wedding dress with her friends helping her to get dressed. And I just thought that was really strange. I didn't, it was just not something you expected to see in a Disney movie, a, a girl helping herself to get her own wedding dress on. And shortly after that, I realized God had used that, you know, to set the stage in my life. I ended up reading Revelation 19, six through nine which says, then I heard what sounded like a great many people, like the noise of flooding water and like the noise of loud thunder. The people were saying, hallelujah, our Lord God, the almighty rules. Let us rejoice and be happy and give glory, God glory, because the wedding of the lamb has come and the lamb's bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean were given to her to wear. The fine linen means the good things done by God's holy people. And the angel said to me, write this, happy are those who have been invited to the wedding meal of the lamb. And the angel said, these are the true words of God. Well, there it was <laughs> with the power of the Holy Spirit. This, this one little phrase greatly stuck out to me. It was, and the lamb's bride has made herself ready. It does not say that the lamb made her ready. It says that she made herself ready by putting on the fine linen, which are the good things done by God's holy people. Praise God that we are saved by grace. But this verse clearly talks about works. Faith without works is dead. James 2, 26. Um, I, 14 years later, <laughs> Um, I ended up watching this movie again last year. Um, I don't know how many years it had been since I'd actually watched it, but I was inspired to watch it again. And once again, little did I know that eventually God would use that to set the stage to speak to me about the same concept once again. Um, my husband and I, um, we have been wedding photographers on the side for about eight years and we both felt like this endeavor was coming to an end. I, I don't know if we'll still do weddings or not, but I just felt in my heart that the last few we did last year was um, the last ones. And we had actually booked three weddings. They were in consecutive months last year. And like I said, little did I know that God was going to speak about this same idea of getting the bride ready. Um, and this time he didn't just do it through a movie. He used actual weddings in my life. So, um, wedding number one, we, first I want to point out all three of these weddings. It actually ended up being four. We experienced firsts for us, things that we hadn't experienced before after even eight years of doing weddings. And the first one was that we had never done a full wedding. We'd done like a, a private wedding before with just the bride and groom, but we'd never done a full blown wedding where there wasn't a bridal party. And because there wasn't a bridal party, when this bride needed help, she had to rely on Joe and I. So anyway, what happened was her dress, she put it on, it didn't fit. Um, in fact, there was a big foot long gap between those little buttons and those little loopholes. And they were not going to come together. So of course she's frantic. And I 
Joe and I being very artistic people, I knew without a doubt that we could fix it. So I calmed her down. I went and I found Joe. And with her permission, she actually allowed us to work on her dress. And Joe cut off those little buttons and I cut off those little loopholes. And we ended up fastening the top of her dress together with some ribbon. And in my opinion, and Joe thought the same thing, her dress actually ended up looking better that way. It looked very elegant. Um, the, with this big gap in the back, it just, it just fit. And I don't think anybody knew that that wasn't the way her dress was supposed to be. So we saved the day. So in the midst of doing this, I, God brought back the fact that I had just watched Enchanted and I'm like, here I am actually really helping a bride get wet, um, ready for her wedding day. And that symbolism wasn't wasted on me. So then, um, wedding number two. This was another first for us. We arrived to find the bride already drunk. And that's something we'd never experienced before. So I, I we'd been to weddings where eventually during the reception, the, a bride and groom would get drunk, but I, we'd never been to one where the bride was drunk before, you know, before we even got there. So, um, <sighs> It, it really bothered me. I, 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 my mind flooded with all these thoughts. I couldn't help it. I, I didn't want to judge her, but I couldn't help it. And I wondered what kind of woman would allow herself to get drunk on such an important day, at least so early in the day. Her house, she got ready in her house. And I remember thinking, wow, she has great style. I, I, I love that. I love that. I love how she decorated it. Her dress was so cute. Her bridesmaid dresses were perfect. You could tell she had great flair and great style. But it all seemed to be wasted on the fact that she was drunk. Um, nonetheless, I also, I also kept thinking about the groom who we hadn't seen yet. Um, what kind of man would want to marry a woman that would choose to get drunk on her wedding day? Um, but nonetheless, despite the fact that she was drunk and despite the fact that she arrived late to the ceremony, um, it, it didn't stop him. You could tell that he deeply loved her. You could see it in his face. I will never forget that look, the way he looked at her with such intense love. And, with, and it was obvious that he wasn't going to let anything stop him um, from marrying her. Even in that moment, I couldn't help but to think about Christ. Um, and what a great picture of him. Are we not too drunk in our sin, but oh, how he loves us. And he also still wants to marry us. But he just, he deserves a bride that is working hard to get herself ready, to make herself ready and, and one that is awake and, and alert with lamps lit. Well, the very next day, which was a Sunday in church, God spoke to me and I ended up writing these words down. And he said, look at my bride, Susan. She has great taste. She is talented and greatly loved, but she is drunk. She is lush. She is not truly ready for her wedding day. Susan, the way you felt about that bride, think about how I feel about mine. I don't want her to miss out on her wedding day or the planning and process that precedes this day. So wedding number three, I wasn't sure during the first wedding as we were fixing that dress completely if God was speaking, but after that second wedding, I knew he was creating a theme. So in, in anticipation for this third wedding, I just knew, I knew in my heart that somehow this wedding would paint a picture of perfection. And sure enough, it did and God delivered. Um, it was a, like I said, we'd been photographing weddings for about eight years and this was another first for us. We actually had always wanted to photograph a wedding in a vineyard and we'd never had gotten the chance, but this wedding happened to be in a vineyard. And um, to, I don't know, to make it more of God, the vineyard was actually called Grace Hill. It was a wonderful Christ-centered wedding as the couple got married with the vineyard behind them and actual lit lanterns all around the room. But what I loved most about God's complete circle of fulfilling symbolism is the bride's dress. The back of her dress, by design, I might add this time, 
looked exactly like the dress that my husband and I had fashioned for the bride two weddings ago. Um, it, it had this same beautiful open back. And to make this symbolism pop out even more to me that it was God doing this, she actually had a backwards necklace whose purpose served to actually fall um, down the back of the bride, making it even more of a focal point. Um, I knew God was speaking at that point. Um, again, it was a beautiful wedding. And I knew that God was pointing out that indeed his bride will be made ready. Um, and our true wedding feast will commence. In the Song of Solomon, we see in the first few verses that the king fell in love with his lady while she was hard at work in the field, in his vineyard. This is a great picture of Christ, my friends. Likewise, um, he desires to find us hard at work in his vineyard within this mission field called life. Well, I, like I said, I thought that that would be our last wedding and the fact that it was at a vineyard, I just thought, wow, thank you God for this great conclusion to this wedding photography endeavor, but God wasn't done speaking. And we ended up booking a spur of the moment wedding that I didn't know would happen. And this um, was wedding number four. This wedding actually um, was another first for us because the couple getting married was in their late 70s and 80s. But this isn't what made the wedding so unique. What made the wedding unique is that it was a full-blown wedding, just like all the others we had photographed. They didn't let their age force them into having a small ceremony. Instead, they had the full bridal party. Just like younger brides, this bride walked down the aisle with bridesmaids and flower girls. Um, they also had a full reception with a first dance and a cake cutting. This wedding happened to be on a Sunday afternoon, and because of that, I was able to go to church in the morning. And um, knowing that I had this wedding that day, and knowing that God had been speaking through the previous three weddings, I asked him, Lord, are you going to speak through this wedding today? He replied, Susan, my kingdom is for all ages, for all people, male, female, young, and old. The words I speak to you concerning getting my bride ready is for all, not just young women. All are invited to the wedding of the Lamb. Take note of the joy that you will see on the bride and groom's face today. My spirit offers newness of joy for all ages. One should never think their life is ending, for I have always offered new beginnings, always. Well, I did take note of the faces of bride and groom, and I found myself welling up with tears several times during the ceremony, knowing what God had spoken to me and what I was actually witnessing. Um, what made this wedding so unique, like I mentioned, is that it was just like all the rest. They didn't choose a small wedding because they were older. Instead, they chose life. They chose to rejoice and live each day to the fullest. They chose to believe God for new beginnings. We don't know when our last day will be, and we don't know when Christ is coming back. But what we do know is that it isn't over until God says it's over. Well, I thought God was done speaking, um, but he wasn't. He'll never be done speaking until we fully listen. The following Sunday morning, I opened Facebook to find that a dear friend had passed away due to COVID complications, and I hadn't even known she was sick. It happened so fast. Um, I then found out about 10, 10 minutes later from a husband that the mom of some friends of ours had been stabbed in the neck and passed away shortly after from an intruder. I was like, what is happening? I was left heartbroken and confused. All I could think about was my friend's dreams and how there was so much she still wanted to do and achieve. I then got to church to discover that we had a guest speaker who was there to talk about lessons from sorrow. His message was based on the fact that his own wife had died four months prior due to COVID complications. After my thoughts about my own friend earlier in the day, I appreciated something that he said. In regards to one of the lessons he had to share, being that in the worst of times we need the best theology, he shared how many people tried to comfort him by saying that his wife was looking down at him and his children. 
he mentioned that based on these comments, he ended up picturing a heaven having a plexiglass, plexiglass floor and that people in heaven could look down at their loved ones and, and know that they're not with them. Um, he ended up saying that that wouldn't be heaven. That if you saw your loved ones and couldn't be with them, that that would be hell. I appreciated that scenario because it caused me to remember that those that have gone before us who know the Lord are no longer concerned with what they didn't fulfill on earth or their earthly dreams or even with the horrible way they died. Instead, this man pointed out they are now living within complete fulfillment, purpose, and freedom. He also mentioned that heaven is heaven simply because Jesus is there, period. Well, once again, God then spoke to me and I wrote these words down. He said, Susan, I am a good God. No one was made for this world, Susan. Remember that. Better to be with me in my kingdom than on earth, even for one more moment. Death is not something to fear. What people should fear is a life unlived, a life not lived according to my spirit. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Susan, live life to the full. Live. There is still a lot of work to do. If you are still alive, there is work to do. Eternal work, not just busy work. Susan, you are letting the busy work weigh you down. It is not the most important work. Oh, my little Martha. Choose the better option, Susan, for it will not be taken from you. Lay the busy work down and know that I am a God of order. I will give you the time you need to accomplish all tasks, including housework. But my house is in ruins. My bride is drunk and in despair. Go to work, my love. There's always something to do for my kingdom, especially prayer. Time with me will never be taken from you. Believe. Choose wisely. Sit at my feet, even when you don't feel you have time. Your dear friend was good at this. Something she did well, and it will never be taken from her. Susan, there is no sorrow in death for those who belong to me. True mourning is reserved for those who don't. And my love, there's so many right now that claim to know me but do not. Mourn for them, cry for them, but more importantly, shine for them. Bring light to the darkness. This is what Christ is for, to bring light to the darkness. Darkness exists within deception, lies. Testify. With every open door, testify. Don't hold back. Don't sugarcoat. I have called you to bring light to the darkness, to the darkness within every heart, even the hearts that belong to me. My people need revival, a cleansing, and it has begun. I am at work, greatly at work. A great paradigm shift is happening, an unraveling. It is to awaken my people to the truth I have revealed to you today. The life, that life is short and that my people are here for a reason. No more just surviving. It is time to live with purpose. It is time to truly be my bride, my worthy bride, who is worth coming back for. One hard at work in the field. Get to work, my bride. Get my bride ready for how I long for her. She is mine and I want all of her, not just a select few. I come to seek and save the lost. I came to seek and save the lost. The lost, how great is this category? Lessen it, testify, testify my love and encourage others to do the same. This is how the lost will be saved. Give birth to the word of your testimony, Christ being the word of your testimony, that he may once again bring light to the darkness. Lord, thank you for your message to us. And his message is clear. Male or female, young or old, we still have work to do. So let's get busy testifying to the light of Jesus Christ. Um, 
this is a wonderful message and I couldn't have made those weddings do what they did all on my own. I know it was the Lord, and that's why I hope that you'll take this message seriously, but that you'll be encouraged that even in this chaotic world, that God is moving and he is speaking to his children. So join me in testifying to the light of Jesus Christ. Um, this is a blog on my webpage, so if you'd like access to it and you'd like to read it again in its entirety, um, please do so www.bridgestories.org. And please like and subscribe and share this message with others. Thank you so much and God bless.